Good morning to you, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are watching this show, but I can't tell you, it is the third day of the week, meaning it's not day, it is today's talk, and I am Marty G. Welcome to today's talk. I have another friend with me today, I've got Christine. Christine Watts, hello, how are you? I am good, Marty, how are you today? Bad. The sun finally came out. I thought we were going to have more rain the rest of this week. Well, I didn't have to water my deck plants over the last couple of days, so that was a good thing. You did have to, or you didn't? I didn't. Oh, you didn't. I'm like, what kind of plants do you got? I'm like, well, <laughs> more water. I was thinking Noah's Ark's going to come down my street really soon. It's been <laughs> raining like crazy. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time. Well, I appreciate the invitation. It's always fun to talk about leadership to me. Absolutely. Now, I know some people have a hard time with leadership because they think leadership means bossing me around, right? Is that usually what people tend to think or, or no? Well, the people I work with don't think that. But yes, traditionally, that's um, that's sort of the difference between management and leadership. Management mm. is like telling people what to do and leadership is leading the way, inspiration, uh, motivation, and just being being a good person to have around so that people want to work with you. I like with that. you. That's a good with way you, to not for you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I've, I've told people, about saying, you can lead from the back. You can lead That's from right. the middle. You can lead just about anywhere. It's just a matter of just how do you lead. So tell me about the name. The name of your business is, I, I'm taking it's right there above your head. It's tell Leader me Support. Your, tell me about your business. Leader Support Service. And Marty, I came from a background of running businesses. And as a, as a business manager or the leader in several businesses, I always knew how important it was to keep my people developed and motivated and inspired so they could perform their best so that my bottom line would thrive. And I had a lot of on my plate. I was a busy business manager. So I knew that it was important to keep my people inspired, but I didn't always have the time to do it myself. So when I was a business manager, I wish I would have had somebody that I could call on, like the person that I am now with the <laughs> services I have now. You for... needed your, you needed you a few years back. <laughs> right. And that's why I call it leader support, because leaders don't always need a right hand person, but sometimes they need a little extra help to, to get them up that notch so they can sort, especially through these trying times. Oh, I bet. I bet. So that's a good question because I think leadership's had to change a little bit with COVID, right? With this pandemic, people have had to maybe change a little bit. What have been some of the challenges you've had to deal with with the pandemic? Well, the virtual thing is a new challenge. And it's, you know, it's, it's something that I think we all knew we should do more of in the first right. place, but we weren't, there was no sense of urgency to learn the platforms like Zoom. And then COVID came along and all of a sudden it was urgent and we did have to learn it. And I think that that's been a real positive outcome from a negative situation yeah, that I, it's I made agree. us lead better. I, I, you know, I totally agree with you. I tell people for me, um, people say, well, Marty, what's it like now that, you know, especially when the, when the, when the first lockdown came out, like, mm -hmm. well, Marty, how are you dealing with the lockdown? How are you, you know, working from home? I'm like, Tuesday? Because I had been working from home for, like, that's pretty much what I've been doing before. But everybody else now, they're having to deal with video and all this other stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, the band-aid's finally been ripped off. Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> people didn't have to do it. It was an optional thing. But now it's like, oh, I have to learn this platform finally. So it, it, you're right. I think it's just jump people into it. So what made you, besides, you know, yourself, I mean, what made you just do this? I mean, is, has there been, either people start coming to you or did you just saw the need and said, oh, I'm going to create this business? I mean, what made you do it? Well, you know, I had a good friend that was a, a management consultant over on the coast. I, I came from the Newport Lincoln City area of L Lincoln County, and he suggested that I get into management consulting because it's he knows my personality I love variety I'm a very creative person and I I know business really well and so through my business management background and my creativity and flexibility I can I can go into a, a bunch of different kinds of businesses and 
help them see the opportunities they might be missing, help them see the blind spots that they might be missing, and, and help them milk the opportunities that are right in front of them that they might not see. Um, that's where I use my hang gliding metaphor of, of being able to fly by the seat of your pants. There are opportunities out there in the wind and we can soar if we, if we approach it like a pilot. <laughs> right. So you're kind of like that uh, executive once removed sort of thing on their level. Is that, is that kind of a good way to look at it? It's like, okay, I'm on your level, but I'm not in your organization, so I can help you. Is that kind of the best way to look at it? It is, um, you know, some people have said, but you don't know my business. And my comeback is usually, I don't need to know your business. In fact, it's really good that I don't know some of the internal politics and some of the ways things have always been because I come in with fresh eyes and I, I see that their situation in a way that they might not see it. And so that's, that's the beauty of having an outsider come in. I, I like the metaphor of why did Pavarotti use a coach? Do you think Pavarotti's the, the great Italian tenor for anybody that doesn't know? Mm -hmm. Do you think his coach could sing better than he could? I don't think so. No, but no. his coach could hear what he couldn't hear. And so he would reflect back to him. And so that Pavarotti could make the changes that he needed to. Looks like we're looking at my website there. That looks kind of familiar there, doesn't it? That is your website I've got up there, yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to the different areas, I mean, is there any particular business sector that you focus on? Is it like tech or is it, um, or is it just any business in general? Well, I, I focus on businesses that are big enough to have a group of employees, say 20, but small enough that they don't have their own HR department or training department. And so they need some, um, I, I do a lot of the people side of business. So I work with a, a lot of the leaders and developing them, them and the, uh, the teams, getting them to work together better, improving communication skills, customer service skills, uh, conflict appreciation skills. And I don't like to say conflict resolution because I don't think conflict's a bad thing. No, conflict, I hate that. <laughs> conflict is just two people seeing things from two different vantage points and it, it enriches the outcome if you treat it right, respectfully. Right. So um, those are the kinds of things I work with. I have, I've written business plans, marketing plans. And so I've done the whole scope of management, but I tend to focus more on the people side because I think that's where we get the best results for our bottom line. Right. And I think you're right because I, I've always had this mindset, you, you, know, you take care of people um, and they take care of the organization, right? So if you can get down to that granular level, have you ever come across like a common thread? You're like, oh yeah seen this before. Oh yeah, there it is again. Oh yeah, there it is again. What's the most common thing that you think you run into? Well, the common thing that I think I run into that just popped into my head when you said that was with people I don't work with. And that common thread is that we don't need staff development or we don't need leadership development or we don't need customer service training because we did that seven years ago. <laughs> and and those kinds of things is never one and done. It's like self-improvement or like exercise or yeah. like anything else. It's something that we have to continually focus on right. because as soon as we stop focusing on it, things start to slide back downhill. Yeah. And they hit the you, box a few years ago, they're good. Yeah, they did yeah. everything they needed, they're good. Right? Yeah. Yep. And, you know, so that, that's one thing. I know when people tell me that, that they're probably not a good match for my services. You know, I, I work with people that know that that's an important thing to develop their employees, to invest in their employees, 
but they're just too busy to have the time to do it themselves. When I was a manager, I used to send people, I'm gonna show my age here. I used to send people to career track seminars or Fry, wow. Fred Pryor, Pryor seminars. Mm -hmm. And this was from the Oregon coast. I would send them to Portland to take these workshops on leadership development, teamwork and service and sales um, because I didn't have the, time or you know i was busy running the business and i would end up paying their gas sometimes overnight expenses just to to invest in my employees and always came back to repay me but boy i wish i would have had somebody that would have come into my organization and right. done it on my turf <laughs> in my timeline you know for my own people and, and gear it right to my business. And that's what I can do when I go out to other businesses. You that's can what customize I do. It. You can customize it based on them, which is totally really, really good. Because I think a lot of times we, we get tunnel vision. We're so focused on us and focused on our message, focused on what we're doing. We can't really see, what is that saying? You can't see the forest through the trees. Yeah, yeah. Right, right? Yeah, well, you get really, you know, business managers are busy. That's a tough job. I mean, it does, people don't give it enough credit for how hard it is to be the boss. Um, and anybody that used to not be the boss will tell you that because once you are in that position, it's like, geez, there's a lot of, a lot of plates I've got to keep spinning. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes your people's development falls onto the back burner because there's, it's easy to put off. It's, it's too important to put off, but it's easy. You know, there's, it's not like your budget or your year in sales figures. It's, there's no deadline. So it's easy to say, oh, I'll do that next month and I'll do that next year. And pretty soon seven years go by and we still haven't done it. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> Always put up tomorrow what you can do today. That was my motto in college when I was going through my first year of college before I went in the military. I'm like, ah, oh. Put it off till tomorrow. They can That's do it. Right. I'm not do it today. But or perfectionists will procrastinate too, because you know I we're gonna wait until I can do a perfect job out of it. Oh yeah, I've and got plenty of those. Then you get that perfectionist uh, paralysis, you know. And, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, analysis of paralysis. Yeah, Canfield talks a lot about that. That's what he's one of my people I follow like religiously. I, I when I used to do Jack Canfield. You know, I'm, so I'm sorry. Jack Canfield? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I follow him religiously. I've, I've actually met him. And um, I used to uh, coach his program. And I teased him once. I said, you know, you stole my idea. <laughs> what about Because so there, there's all these self-help books all over the place, right? And I said, you know, at some point, they all say the same thing. And I said, I just wish someone would, like, just take it all, put it all in one book, you know, quote everybody, cite your sources, but just put it in one dang book. Yeah, well, that's what he did with the success principles. He pretty much quotes everybody and puts it in one book. I'm like, dude, you totally stole my idea. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Law, law of attraction. You put it out there. You just didn't do anything with it. I did. I said, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Well, I said, Jack, where's my royalty check? He's like, yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> forget it, buddy. Money. You didn't do anything with it. I'm like, all right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. One of the books um, that I wrote four books, but the fifth book that I'm in was also, I, I had a chapter that I contributed, and Jack Canfield had a chapter. Ken Blanchard have, had a chapter. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was on flying by the seat of my pants, or oh, cool. how to fly by the seat of your pants, which was my first book. And that got a lot of attention because it was a, a unique topic. It was self-help and leadership development in, in a different kind of a formula you know and the idea is that your goals don't always work out and you've instead of thinking it's bad to fly by the seat of your pants you should really prepare to fly by the seat of your pants because yeah. you're going to need to yeah. and I use my metaphors from hang gliding uh, to illustrate how you can be prepared to fly by the seat of your pants because you know people that fly hang gliders the ones that are still living among us you know, we're pretty prepared when we ran off cliffs and ran off the top of Mount Bachelor or whatever. So, yeah, there's not a lot of room for error because no, you know, yeah. it's very unforgiving of any <laughs> like, carelessness. Oops, and I'm done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
So if the, I, I want to make sure, because you're, you're, I know you're, you've been up in Lane County just a very short period of time because you came from the coast. So uh -huh. what's the best way that you know viewers can help you? And want to make sure we get to reviewed, uh, get you referred, not reviewed, but referred. Because um, I'm going to make sure this gets put into the the link, uh, the uh, biz referral networking group. But okay. I also want to make sure if people need to get a hold of you, either in that group or anywhere else on the web, what's the best way to get a hold of you? You can Google my name, Christine Waugh. You okay. can look up Leader Support Service, um, Management Consulting, or excuse me, Leadership, let's see, sorry, Business Consulting, one of those kind of consulting. Consulting is kind of a funny word. It means other duties as assigned. You know, yeah. I, need some, I need some help because I don't do everything, and I need somebody that has a good, broad knowledge of a lot of things, um, which I do. But I, like I said, I like to focus on the people side. So I'm involved in uh, Rotary locally okay. and in the, the district. I'm involved in the chamber, of course, which is where I met you. Also in Lane Leaders. Um, so I'm trying to get myself out there. It's it's uh, all my clients that I've had in the past are on the coast, and you know I'd rather just do business locally. If I can. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I, I'm actually spending a lot of my time doing more stuff online too and trying to get out a little bit more of myself. It's, it's it's a little different now, especially with COVID and everything else. So I will definitely make sure folks to have all of Christine's information in the uh, chat as well. Um, not the chat. I always say chat in the comment section. Yeah, so, yeah. Is there anything you want to share before, before we go? Well, my website has more information than you'd ever want to know about okay. me, my background, um, dozens of clients that I've worked with, um, ways that I've worked with them. Uh, flexibility is my middle name because I get bored if I'm not doing something different every day. So I know I, I worked with a, a group of 911 call people answer telephone operators while they were working. Yeah, I saw that on your list of clients. I'm like, so, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I, and a whole bunch of other examples like that, that were just like, those were fun for me. You know, it's like, oh, you don't think you have time to train your people? Yeah, we do. Let's do right. this on their turf. So anyway, awesome. that, I would love to work with anyone that's interested in having a little leadership support. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Well, I'll definitely make sure we include that. So All right. now it's time for the bonus round. You ready for the new section, the new, the new theme, the new part of my show? I it's guess. Called, it's called, it's called, it's called. Let's get real. Okay. All right. So let's get real. I'm going to ask you three questions that I've taken so much time to prepare for you like five minutes before we started talking. Um. So, <laughs> here's the questions that I'm going to ask you. Here's question number one. Um, question number one, Christine, in what way are you quirky? Quirky? Quirky. I have kind of a snarky sense of humor. Okay. Give me an example. Well... When I say, well, oh, hmm, give you an example. My whole well, life is I'm not an example. You to be funny. I'm not telling you to be funny because I, I used to do stand-up comedy. And people yeah. Say, yeah, make me laugh. I'm like, oh, yeah. I that. So give me an example when somebody said, oh, that's just are snarky. So give me an example when somebody thought you were snarky. I can't think of one. No? I must not be snarky. Maybe I'm a wannabe snarky. Maybe you want to be snarky. Maybe I want to be snarky, but I'm really very serious. Okay. That's it. That's it. I like it. We'll take it. <laughs> Question number two. Okay. Uh, what do you need to learn to make time for? Mm, walking my dog more. Walking your dog more. What kind of dog do you have? Just got a puppy. He's a pity mutt mix. Something okay. or other. And yeah. uh, do you know how much puppies, how much energy they have? <laughs> I got a Rottweiler. She's four. These first four years have been insane. Yeah. Just, do you ever slow down ever? Ever. 
Luckily, right. we have five acres, and I can go out and throw the ball all over the place, and, oh and he gets a good exercise. But oh. yeah, that's that. I, I need more time to do that. I need to make more time for that. Yeah. How old? How old is your? How old is your puppy? He's five months old. Oh yeah, you're you're gonna. Oh yeah, you got oh, a yeah. lot of time coming up. I got a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last question. What's the worst movie you've ever seen in a theater? Hmm. Or just the worst movie you've ever seen. How about that? Since we've all been on lockdown, I mean, could be a streaming thing. I'm trying to think of one that I just turned off because it was so bad. You know, I don't watch that many movies. I watch more television mystery shows like okay. well, give me a who story. done it and what got done to who and how did yeah, they do it I, I, I like to watch documentaries and i watch the the crime real crime stuff so like give me one that you just thought was really good and you're like oh this sucks well oh that sucks hmm. because usually you know with streaming if it sucks and i think it sucks in the first minute i turn it off yeah that's what i do but a good one i watched if i can you know not even answer the question and go in my own direction is uh i just watched the frank sinatra documentary and that was really fun really? I, I didn't realize how many good songs that he sang i used to sing in a, a jazz quintet or i had a quartet and i was the singer for it and we sang old american songbook uh, standards like Ain't Misbehaving and Fly Me to the Moon and those kinds of songs. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how many songs that that Frank Sinatra sang, because I'm kind of focused on female singers while I was in that part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, he, he just, it was fun watching him and learning the history of the Rat Pack and everything. And where, where did you watch that at? on netflix i think netflix. okay i'll take a look for it i actually yeah. will tell you i'm very surprised i watched a um documentary on britney spears did you watch that i saw it was on and i'm going uh, that's one that i would probably put in my aunt category i thought it would be in my aunt. i feel sorry for her i never thought i would ever say that about britney i do feel sorry for her hmm I'm going to have to wreck If you don't want to watch like one of the long ones, watch the one on Hulu. It's only an hour. I would recommend it because okay. it puts a lot of stuff in perspective. You're like, wow, did not know it was that bad. <laughs> well, you know, that people, people idolize celebrities and think, oh, isn't that great? And I don't think we have a clue of what the reality of well, that lifestyle for, is. Especially for this conservatorship, because it literally was like, it was prison. I mean, it, this was bad. This was uh, really bad. I did not even realize how bad it was. I mean, I thought, I mean, you think, you know, like, oh yeah, right. She's still got her millions and she's doing all of yeah, that. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> it was really. Bad. So I would say if you're going to watch, watch the one on Hulu, it's worth it. It's 58 minutes of, because she's not in it at all. It's all these other whistleblowers, all those other people saying. Right, right. Okay, now that she finally said something, now we're going to finally talk. <laughs> and one guy was a security guy that was with her for like nine years. And he's like saying, all right, I'm going to tell you everything. I'm like, whoa. There's a new job for you, Marty. You can get into doing documentaries. I don't have the patience. I want to know what happened right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's have it from an off topic anyway. So thank you for being on. We're not going to talk about... Thank you for having me. You're always a joy to talk to. Thank and you, always, always a little unexpected. I still have to think of why am I snarky? I'm going to quit saying that. I, I guess yeah. I'm not very snarky. See? I'm very See? down to earth, aren't I? You are. You are very, you are very fun. I didn't think you were snarky at all. I'm like, snarky, give me an example. So, anyway. <laughs> so folks, I want you to find Christine Waugh. I will have her information in the in the comments below. She's very unsnarky for leadership <laughs> services. And I will also, uh, if you want to be on the show, I'll have my information in there and how you can book it. Hopefully, uh, it'll be just as fun as we had here. Probably even not as much. Okay, it'll Probably be Probably more fun. <laughs> You just get more and more fun every day. Aw, <laughs> thanks. That's awfully nice of you. 
All right. So thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day yourself, okay? All right. All right. Take care. Thanks for being on. See you. Okay, bye. Straight to the stage, they love me. love me. I understand they hungry, but please don't hate, that's ugly. I've been sliding, shaking, moving. I've been popping in my city. Well, okay. Shout it, say she love the way we do it, do it with me. I be too turned up to ever give a f. Yeah, yeah. I ain't come to argue, let a n. Please, baby. They been talking pennies, I need bigger bucks. About to catch a flight, I need to switch it up. Okay. Got that black boy joy, might do my dance on me. Ain't no disrespect, might put my hands on